Hey guys, it's Bavan and I'm back with another time lapse. And since it's Halloween, we're gonna do some cryptids. This one is the Jersey Devil, and I wanted to do something that was more detailed with the trees. Uh, this is the short time lapse of it, and we're gonna go into the longer one now. There will be links to prints down in the description for this. This was also released early on the Patreon. I've been working on this on Patreon streams as well. And in this video, I thought it would be fun to talk about as we get into the darker months in the Northern Hemisphere, at least, it can get a bit more difficult to keep the motivation going. And it gets very easy to become discouraged with making progress in drawing. So if you've ever heard of the hierarchy of needs, I think it's Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I conceptualize the amount of drawing and the type of drawing that I get done in a similar way. So it would be a triangle, like a pyramid, and you'd have the lowest level and then you'd sort of work up to the higher ones that are more difficult and take more time and concentration and you have to become more accustomed to, to be able to do it on a regular basis. And it describes the path that I followed to get into drawing more regularly and becoming used to doing it every day and being able to consistently work on a higher level um, mentally or expend more mental energy on it and be used to that and not exhausted by it. So the lowest level would be to just draw anything, just do something in the sketchbook. This is what I will usually talk about where I say I started off just saying I need to do two pages of a sketchbook a day, it doesn't matter what I draw, it can be anything. And that helps you just get used to the act of drawing and the repetitiveness of it in terms of forming the habit. And once you get that down and you get used to it, you can go up a level and then you hop to drawing something that you want to draw. So whatever you're particularly interested in draw some of that and you know it's nothing that's going towards any long-term goal but it's just some short-term fun that you're having so you've worked up enough with just drawing anything and maybe doodling every day to the point where you can sit down and have fun drawing something you're not gonna be like oh no I have to sit down and draw this thing and it gets to the point where it's not fun <laughs> this is sort of where you're you're so used to it from the repetition that you can sit down and enjoy yourself drawing something and not stress too much. And then the level up after that would be drawing something that you consider that you need to work on. So as I mentioned, this was my pathway to get into being able to work on commissions and do them consistently and keep to deadlines. So I've gone through all the other levels of drawing anything and being used to doing it every day, so it's not a fuss, I can draw things that are fun and not get stressed about them. Um, and then it worked into, you know, I need to do studies of these particular things, I need to learn how to do this and that and the other, and then I need to do this commission that I've been paid to do. But that also could be that you want to work on a comic that is a long-term goal, like I'm trying, I'm attempting to. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna you wanna write a book so you need to work on that every day and you've built up that ability from going through those other steps. It could just be that you want to study a particular thing so that you can work towards that knowledge so it's more of a distant goal rather than a immediate one like it is in the level below this so that's obviously just the short term fun but this is thinking ahead a bit more um, but since we've gone through the other level of being able to do stuff and have fun with it and just repeat it as we learned in the first one then those blocks that we've climbed up have allowed us to get to the point where we can apply those to work towards long-term goals so it's more of a case of don't stress yourself out or learning not to stress yourself out I guess <laughs> by slowly easing into doing stuff repeatedly on a regular basis and getting used to just the act of drawing and being able to do it and not stress about it. Um, you, gotta, you gotta ease yourself in slowly. And this is probably something you could apply to other things. So to go over it again, the first level at the base is to just draw anything and do it regularly so that you get used to the act of drawing. 
The second level up is to draw something that you want to draw, which is short term fun. So you've got so used to it at this point that you can you can draw silly things for fun and enjoy yourself. And then the next level up from that, which takes a bit more brain power, is to work on something that is a long term goal. And at this point, it's kind of getting to stuff that you consider that you, you need to do. You need to do this um, because either you want to or you're obligated to. But this is the point you want to get to where you can do things consistently and it's not such a strain mentally on you because you have conditioned yourself through the other steps to get used to it. Now, that said, when you spend too much time just doing the stuff that you need to do, it gets kind of samey and you need to step down a few levels and do some stuff for fun just to chill out, you know? It's okay to do that too. Um, and that's okay to be at that stage or, you know, even, even to not want to go up to the higher level and do something that is a very strenuous long-term goal <laughs> like that. If you just want to draw silly stuff, you go for it. That is great. But yeah, I do consider that middle stage somewhere that you have to step down to occasionally because that's where experimentation happens. You just draw something silly one-off to try and play with something because especially when you're doing commissions, you need a very well established style that people can see in your portfolio so that they know what they're going to be getting and it's not a surprise when they get it. <laughs> um, so it's something very clearly repeatable and a process that you have developed um, and is going to be to a standard that's, you know, very clear to someone. Uh, so it gets easy to get very stale. Um, when you are repeating a process like that very often. So, you know, step down and do some silly drawings and experiment with things every now and then. That's what I'm trying to lean into at the moment with the Patreon stuff because I've been doing a lot of very repeatable stuff with commissions to where it's starting to fry my brain a little bit and I need to play. I need to play around and see what other directions I can go in. On that thought also, Something else that helps is to change the medium that you're playing with and experiment or also the process that you use. So I tend to lean to lines very much. I very much like my lines. I don't tend to go in paint in with big blocks of colour. So if I start to get bored of that and it starts to obviously become repetitive like that and difficult um, in a frustrating way then I can step back and try a different medium. So I'll get a different brush and start slapping down shapes or I'll start using like physical paint for a change uh, and seeing things differently like that or in a different medium in a different place helps quite a lot because it makes your brain uh, readjust to something else um, and it's easy enough that you're basically doing the same thing. You're still doing art, you're still moving your hand in the same way basically, but it makes you have a bit more of a puzzle to figure out, like how am I going to deal with it if I do the process this way, if I turn it on its head or something. And with different mediums also, I maybe would also lump in crafts with this if you don't necessarily want to stick to the same medium and you need something that's just going to rejig your brain a little bit. <laughs> I like to do different crafts like sculpting and sewing, so when I get fed up of drawing I start to think about things in 3D and they're a nice thing to play with and even with those I have to go and draw concepts before I start making it. So that gives me something else that I have to draw and think about in a different way. So how am I going to translate it from the sketch into something 3D? Like that's the end goal rather than the drawing, so I get to play with the sketches um, and am looser and there's not such a weight on making those sketches look nice because they're just going to be reference for the thing that I make later that is the end product. And sometimes you think of something like that to do that would be fun to sculpt maybe, but maybe that's too much effort and you decide to draw it. You know, you can swip swap between them and it's more fun and it's more experimental and you get to play around and come up with different ideas. 
Another thing I like to do that I mention a lot is to look through my old sketchbooks. Uh, if you've seen my videos or I review tablets and things, you can see my selection of sketchbooks that I have lined up on my old ones because I like to sit on the floor and open them all up and go through them and see how things have developed and where I was going through those other stages that I mentioned earlier and the different experimentation that I did to get where I am today and what other possible directions I could have gone off in. So it gives me ideas for experimenting like that because I've been thinking about some of my old styles lately and I'm trying to work on developing a new one that leans into kind of an offshoot of where I could have gone with some of it. And I think it's also very motivating to see your old art and how far you've come. It can be really fun to take some old art that you've done from a sketchbook that maybe you didn't finish and go and redraw it or just re-sketch it um, because it's it's a very easy boost in confidence if you can redraw something from earlier on that looks worse than what you can do now. If you can do better than yourself from before, it's a very quick and easy confidence boost and especially if you keep up with the first level that I mentioned earlier on where you just do so much a day, you will slowly gather up a large selection of ideas and quick doodles and messing around that you can go and reference later. You can always go and pick from that and finish things up. Um, what I used to do, especially when I wasn't feeling like sketching, was to go through my old sketches and find one that I wanted to clean up. So I would have a nice catalogue of doodles and quick ideas that I'd done. Uh, and, you know, I wouldn't have time to finish them all, but I could go and pick one or two and finish them up. And then I would end up with a nice illustration. This could be digital as well. You can save all your stuff digitally or you can scan your sketchbooks if you don't want to physically keep them. They take up too much room. Um, but it's nice to have that personal archive of all the things you've done so that you can reference them again later and see what you've learned and how you've learned it and gone through the process. And like I say, it's really motivating to go back through that because it's very easy to forget what you've done if you start to feel a bit less interested in things or a bit bored or frustrated. Um, you can go back and see, oh, I can do this. I can, you know, I can kick stuff out. I can experiment. I've got all these ideas that I've never picked up and played with again. I also find it very fun to laugh at my old art, um, at how much I don't like it or how bad it is. Um, and j just kind of view it from a perspective of what I know now and what I was doing wrong. I guess in an endearing way, because it's like, oh, look, I was trying, I was trying, and I, I learned finally. <laughs> um, but it's, it's kind of nice to look back on stuff and be like, oh. The next suggestion I'd make is one that seems contrary to what you'd think you should do. Limit the amount of art that you're looking at, because it's very easy to have so much in your feed, anywhere that you go and consume art content, that it becomes overwhelming and you don't spend enough time looking at the art to where you can understand what it is that you like about it or to really enjoy it thoroughly. So what I tend to do is to follow a certain amount of artists and then I'll follow them for a while and see what it is that I like about their art and see if I can integrate that into my own stuff and if I want to or to understand why they're doing it and why it works. And then once I'm done and I get sort of bored or I've figured out what it is that I like, I will unfollow them and follow someone else because I don't like my feed to be too packed full of art because it gets too difficult to concentrate on all of it, to be honest. Um, this can be a problem with Pinterest as well. So I try to stick to just a few artists and then every now and then I will swap out who I follow. And that stops me from being overwhelmed. It helps me concentrate on one or two things. And when you see so much all compiled in one place and you can just keep scrolling and scrolling through it, it it's very easy to be discouraged by that because look at all these people that are really good and better than me and how am I ever gonna get there? But if you look at people one at a time or just a few at a time, it's 
easier to sit and look at it and observe and pick apart what it is they're doing in their in their process as you see them posting things um, and it doesn't become just an onslaught of constant content <laughs> that is really difficult to chew on and process. This might be one that's difficult for some people to do um, because I, I know most people will just go and follow everyone so that they have a constant stream of stuff to look at. Um, so it might, it might not be for everyone, but uh, you could, if this is something you think might help you, institute the one in one out rule. So if you follow someone else, you get rid of someone else that you're following. So it clears up your feed and it's not as jam packed. <laughs> Another offshoot of this could be to reduce the amount of references that you are actively going hunting down and saving because we all know you're not going to use all those. We all know, we all know you're not going to use all those. So it's better to go and think of what it is you want to draw and go and find a reference for it at the time you want it and then do something with it before you go and look for more. That That's, that's a challenge from me to you, all of you, <laughs> to calm down on hoarding the references um, and actually go and use whichever ones you are finding, which is definitely something I need to calm down on because I maybe spend a bit too much time on Pinterest hoarding references um, uh, to the point where I will go on there and look for more rather than going through the ones that I have saved <laughs> to actually use. So that's one where I need to take my own advice as well. <laughs> but um, it is very time consuming to just go looking for references that you might never use. So my general rule, and I've heard concept artists mention this is that you you only really go looking for the references when you need them because dependent on what it is that you're trying to do it may be very specific so you're gonna waste a lot less time if you just look for the references you need when you need them we're about halfway through the video now so have a drink stay hydrated and all that which leads on to my next point which is you want your space that you draw in to be comfortable so it's okay to Organize your desk, organize the places you like to draw, make them nice and comfy, uh, get you a nice cup of tea or something while you sit down to draw. I did see a video where someone mentioned that it helps to romanticize the process of what you're doing so that you are then more motivated to engage in it because if you think, oh, I'm gonna be cool and sit down and do my drawing in my like, nice little space that I've laid out, it becomes more enjoyable to go and engage in and sit down and then once you get into the drawer and you completely completely forget about that but it carries you over from the oh I guess I should draw into the oh I should go and do that that's like a nice fun thing that's nice and comfortable and enjoyable. I suppose that's a fun thing to do as well that can give you more motivation if you set up your little art space and get all the things that you like in it um, get everything within reach so that you need it, maybe, maybe not like your phone or anything, or anything that's going to distract you, you probably want that across the room and away, <laughs> so that it's not distracting, but uh, if you have prints of things that you like, or artists that you like, or designs of things that you enjoy that you have, just, you know, I'm sure you guys have collections of random little things that you enjoy and sort of influence your stylization. It's nice to have those in the surrounding area so that you can keep looking at them while you're doing stuff. Basically rev up that nesting instinct and just like go to town. If you want to do one of those like desk studio tour things on a video, if you think that would be cool or, you know, take pictures of your setup and show it to someone because then it's like, oh, that's where you do the drawing. Where's the drawing then? This might be one of those backwards engineering fake it till you make it things. So if you make the space that you draw in, you obviously have to justify that by doing the drawing. <laughs> so you can kind of mind games yourself. That also plays in with maybe you need to get more comfy, maybe you need to have a drink, maybe it's too warm or it's too cold and you need to adjust stuff because sometimes it's little stuff like that that puts you off to be honest. Maybe you're just not sat in a comfortable position. Maybe you need a pillow behind your back to prop you up or something. Be aware of if you are physically uncomfortable or not and anything you can do to adjust that to make it easier for you to sit and draw for extended periods. <laughs> and all of this advice I think is something you have to balance or you know, not do too much of, because if you spend too much time making the space look nice, then you don't want to use it and it's too fancy, so 
you have to balance and even out how much of each of these you're doing and like you know generally being aware of your posture and stuff and if you're comfortable but if you spend too much time making things comfortable you'll just fall asleep in the chair or get too comfy <laughs> and decide to watch crap on YouTube or something <laughs> like me I'm the crap on YouTube it was me all along there's something else I heard someone say recently which is doing crafts and buying the things you need to do the crafts are two completely different hobbies because a lot of the time you buy the stuff and then you don't end up using it and end up hoarding it. Uh, and I think the same can apply to this in that you like the idea of doing the drawing and sitting and doing the work, but you don't actually like doing it. So <laughs> it can be very easy to lean into what I just mentioned where you're trying to set it up and make it seem like fun for yourself uh, and then not actually doing it. So you, you do have to be careful to actually you know, do the work <laughs> and not just like the idea of it. It can help to go and make things with other people also. You can do collabs, you can do art trades. Sometimes that veers a little bit too far into the obligation side of things, um, which is difficult if you just want to do loose silly stuff. I guess you can draw gifts for people as well. There's a bit less pressure there. It depends how much pressure you need to get yourself to do stuff because sometimes a little bit of stress like that is helpful to get you moving. <laughs> um, sort of in what I mentioned a second ago, where you set you, you, you set everything up to go and do the thing, so you are then obliged to do it. And it works the same with if you bring other people into that and work on like group projects and things. So it can be fun to go and do that as well, or even like competitions that are out there or um, more wider spread things like art contests. These are really good if you want to build up a portfolio or do more finished pieces and you struggle with motivation for that. If you have a deadline and a set thing to work to, uh, just committing to that and making the thing can give you a very easy kind of step to follow and you don't really even necessarily have to finish it if it's a contest. Maybe maybe you don't finish it on time, so you can kind of gauge where you're at and if that is something that you want to make faster. Um, it gives you a good read on things without having to open commissions where you're going to be very beholden to one person and getting something done on time for them. Something else that's quite easy to do is to write out a list of the things you want to do and you could probably set this out in terms of like what are the short term goals, what are the long term goals. You could write a list of ideas for things that you want to draw or you want to get better at. What I used to do was start to pinpoint what it was that I wanted to improve on in a list and then I would gather them together into one thing and try and do one illustration that covered all those things so that it was a bit more of a challenge for me. So I'd want to work on perspective, so I'd include like a more detailed background and I also wanted to work on say a certain kind of lighting. So I'd merge those together and make them into one thing. So like with this one I wanted to do something with trees but I also wanted to do something monochrome. Um, so I'm getting to experiment with the lines and the way that I'm doing stuff there and I'm also doing all this nibbly detail with the trees and those things work together really well for what I'm trying to achieve and study. Uh, with your list of ideas also, what you can do and what Cherry does is to put them on little pieces of paper and put them into a box and then when you have some free time to draw, you can pull those ideas out. You could also get people to put ideas in there for you or have people suggest them and you can put them in there. Uh, but it's, it's like a raffle, so you put your tickets into the box and then shuffle them around and you pull them out when you have time. Um, I guess that's something where you have to actually keep to the one that you pull out and not go rifling through there because it kind of defeats the point if you do that. But um, that is also very helpful because then it's, it's anything that's a little bit more out of your control can give you motivation because if it's too, if it's too centered on you coming up with the idea, in the moment right away. It can be a bit too much pressure rather than, you know, a little bit less and just enough. <laughs> um, another one is to go and do some studies because doing studies and not imaginative drawing is going to give you a different method of thinking and it will separate you from 
having too much freedom there again and you also get to learn at the same time so you can go and study things specifically that you want to work on and uh, what you can also do which is a very good one uh, to see very immediate improvement sort of in the same way you would like the earlier example where you take something that you've drawn before and you redraw it again so that you can see the improvement now from the last time and that is to draw something that you are not familiar with from memory and see how it turns out <laughs> and then once you're done with it you go and draw it again next to it but using reference and then you compare them, and generally there will be a very big jump in the quality, very immediately. And th that's a good way to explain how important using reference is, but it's also a very big immediate boost that will get you a lot more motivated to draw things, and hopefully get you less scared um, of how to use reference. Because when you can very clearly see the way you thought of something before directly next to the way that you think of it now you've used reference it's very easy to be like oh maybe I'm doing this with other things maybe I am not perceiving things in the way that I think I am and I'm not able to translate it from the memory of it I have in my head in my kind of visual memory that I've built up onto the paper as well as I thought I could so it's it's a very good explanation of that if you can go through that process but it's very good for motivation too. Another thing you can use if you want to roll with the raffle ticket idea is to use some random generators so there's a whole bunch of things like that uh, for character designs and the way that they look or character descriptions so it can be fun to go and do that you've got a similar what would you say, exercises, I think, where people will take something like an animal and then try and design them as a person. <laughs> so you have something where you have a description of what something looks like or a vague idea and you try and translate it into something else. Um, so that's a very easy one where you, you kind of have like loose instructions on what to do and it's a simple thing that you can play with. It's a very simple, um, I guess, goal, description, set of boundaries that you can stay within. You can see a theme appearing here. Uh, there is also, on that idea, lots and lots of redraw memes or the kind of box memes where it's like, draw this character in this style, draw this character in that style. Um, draw this character doing that, draw this character doing that, and it's very easy to get tucked into one of those because that usually works into fun art, or you can do it with your own characters, or you could do it with some of the ones you've made up with these other ideas, and it's generally a very nice little format that you can fit within, and it's also very easy to communicate with people doing that because there's, there's a lot of people doing it, so if you see other people doing it, you might think, oh, I, maybe I'd do it like this. And that said, also, there is plenty of, like, current thing, current meme going around that you can... I was gonna say capitalise on, but I guess, yeah, capitalise on for motivation. You can be like, oh, well, this isn't gonna be relevant in, like, a few days. Let me draw something. Like, go and, go and draw that silly hippo, Mudeng. The silly hippo's funny. The silly hippie, hi, hippie? The silly hippo won't be relevant in a few months, probably, when it grows up and stops being as cute. But it gets you drawing. It gets you drawing something different. Maybe you haven't drawn a hippo before. Maybe you haven't drawn a baby hippo before. <laughs> it's something, it's something weird. You get a lot of that kind of thing with memes and different, like, dances and poses. Uh, like, draw a character in this pose or that pose. Uh, you know, animate them doing this dance. There's a whole bunch of stuff like that, and I don't think there's anything wrong with playing around with that. It's fun, uh, especially if you want to hang around in that middle section where you want to experiment and have a play and have some fun and hang out with people and draw things and stuff. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I hope all this has been helpful. Here is my almost finished Jersey Devil. Um, I decided to make the line art red because I thought it looked 
kind of strange being inverted like that, kind of like the way you turned out. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this helped. If it did, give it a like, share if you think it'll help someone else, and subscribe for new videos when I have them. Like I say, this one was out early on the Patreon, and I did a lot of it on my Patreon streams too. Uh, and there will be more soon. There will be a uh, Halloween stream there, actually, um, where I will be doing more. I'm thinking about doing a Bigfoot. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this helped. Bye bye